In this video, we'll continue on with the point of sale system, and this is part 21. So let's look at what we have so far. We have our items here, and we can plus this all, and everything works. We go here on checkout, and here you will notice the issue, or basically the part that we haven't covered yet. So click on this, and once we click on this, we pay the exact amount here and then confirm. What happens now is it registers the amount paid, and then also the amount of change we have to give back, which is zero. However, there is something here that's happening. We can press on this, and what is happening now is it's being updated. This update is supposed to be fine, but of course now it should not. Once we paid, this customer should not be able to change anything here, even if we clear out the entire item. You can see here, basically, we're having an issue here. So what we're going to do now is basically the next one. We're going to put in here button, which would say next customer, and there's another option here as well, is, is basically the print button, and as well, when we click paid and we confirm the paid, this, all of, or at least every button here should be disabled. We're not allowed to check out, we're not allowed to click on all of these items here, we're even not allowed to, to use this here. So we're going to disable all of these. So let's start to do this right now. So to do that, we need to go back here, we need to go to checkout first, just to figure out here, what is the function here? And I guess what we should do here first, put in here two more buttons, which is the print button and of course the uh, next customer button. So uh, where is this? If I look at change, I guess let's open the console log and search for change. And then we will find here the ID of the item here, which is, let's search for that. I see a customer amount change. All right, that's a specific ID. So I'm going to search for that. Go there, all right. So this is the item here. So let's put in these two buttons immediately. So you say this, and then here, uh, well, I have no idea what we're going to do here for. I'll just leave this for now. Just remove that one here. And this would be, we can say here, next, next customer button. Or maybe here we just say here, customer next button. So it stays within the same range of naming here. Although you can change it in anything you want. And then here maybe the four will be equal to that, I guess. And then here, this is set on disabled only when we click on it and the customer has been paid, we can say next customer. So we say here, next customer. Color here for this, column form label. All right, what do we have here? What is the item here this is of course a button i guess that we need to change this into a specific button can we get here just a design of like this one i'm going to copy this this design here that's basically the insert paid amount it's this button here i guess i correct insert paid amount that's a button all right copy this design we we'll just put it in here i guess we can do that one here now we add this up here this on click you just remove this for now. ID will be this. Rounded pale, all right. This should not be a model. It's just a item here, target, none. And then we say here, next. Oh, we have that already, next custom. Ah, oh, yes. We can just do it here again. Next custom. Save this. Go back here, refresh. Uh, press button, click here and check out. There we are, all right. We have one here, and then we have to see what I have here. It's probably the same design, next customer. That's this input here, sorry. That one needs to be removed. Save that and refresh, all right. Check out, there we are. And then what we're going to do is another one here is, I guess what we could do here above, instead of next customer, this should be print. Receipt, print receipts. Then we have to later on consider how will this be, uh, how do we experience that? How is the user experience on that? We click on that, what will we do? We click here, then we print, and then there will be a button for next customer or something like that. We have to see on this one here. Uh, let's see here, we have this, print receipt, print receipt. This is custom, I guess here we just say it's Print receipt button. Print receipt. Uh, receipt. 
button is that correctly spelled i'm not 100 percent certain we'll have to check later on let me just check that quickly all right so that was apparently correctly spelled so that's fine this one here is not correct spelled so make sure e and then i all right so we're going to copy this and id for this one will be uh print receipt i guess that should be the id as well for this there we are so now we have this one here we save this this is a uh let's see if we have that we have two black buttons maybe this one should be a blue button we can do that one next customer rounded dark this should be primary save that refresh click here check out all right so we have these buttons here nothing fancy we just have created this this one here later on we'll do a uh, window print what we can do basically is alt like command p but there's also another way to do it where we use a specific uh, uh, plugin for this or not really a plugin it's it's uh, i guess a, a javascript library specifically so we have to see on this one we have to work on that and that will be later on this this will be probably next video most important thing what i want to do here is if we click on this and do the exact amount here and confirm at that moment this must lighten up or at least this will be possible and this will the both of these will eventually be blocked and the reason why is it will be only blocked until customer has paid if paid this will be enabled or else it will be disabled and everything else here needs to be disabled so how are we going to do that uh well basically in here customer paid exact calculation we have to go into the model and the model i'm talking about is this one here let's refresh here and then we go to insert paid amount and then we say here confirm so let's see what is this confirm functionality here click on this confirm button you have the confirm paid button all right i'm going to search for this Control f confirm paid button that's on click there we are so we enable oh, all right so this is the enable confirm button and then we are going to say confirm button paid well let's search for that confirm button paid confirm button paid there we are so this one on click let's see this is disabled so if we click on this what will happen well the following will happen we we'll create here a new function and this function will say these two buttons will be enabled so i guess here we can say let's give this here function let's say next customer i'm not sure if that's no it's not next customer we have to think here because this next customer will be another functionality and this one basically as well so we can say here we confirm this what is the right term for this enable buttons i guess let's say enable enable uh i guess i would just say enable next customer button all right next customer and print button so that will be probably the best way how i can describe it for now of course you can look for another term i'm just trying to figure out something on the spot here so we have this here this will trigger this function here so we once we click on this it will trigger this function here and this function will just do only one thing oh sorry no not like that what i want to do here is get the id and the id here the button id will be print receipt button and this print receipt button will say here this uh uh, all right, we have to say this document dot get element by ID and the ID name of course is our print receipt button here. Let me say here this one disable equals false. Once we did that, we will also do another one here, which will be next customer. And this next customer here will be the next customer button. So this disable equal false save this let's go now to the uh, button itself well let's search for that one we can just search for that immediately by copying this and say search here all right the print receipt button this one we will say here disable all right that one is 
confirm, and then we have another one, print receipt button, and then we have here the next button, we say here, disabled as well. So if I refresh now, click on this, press this, check out, there you are. So now we cannot do anything until we do this, pay, confirm. And once we do that, I notice that this is not being tricked. So let's see what's going on here. Alright, so let's see. Why are we not getting the exact for the expected response? So let's go back here. We say here enabled customer print button. Alright. This one will be disabled equals true. Disabled. Did I spell? Alright, sorry. I didn't spell this correctly. You can see here, sorry, it should be like this. Disabled my bad. Save this. I expect now this to work. So there we are. Click this. Pay, confirm, there we are. Now these buttons work. Of course they do not do anything, but that's all right. So once we have this one, then in the next part, we need to focus on how we disable this. So that will be in the next video. We'll focus on how to disable these.